So we'd like to get started with the really last big unit, which is on hypothesis testing. So we looked at confidence intervals. Confidence intervals are a major part of inferential statistics, in which case you're going to be estimating like population mean, for example. Uh, with hypothesis testing, we're going to be testing hypotheses, and we have to develop some terminology here. So first of all, we want to talk about what is a parameter in statistics. So a parameter. So in the field of statistics, a parameter is a numerical measurement for a population. for a population. So a numerical measurement for a population. So the parameters that we've looked at this semester, we've looked at, for example, like the population mean, right? Population mean, that's a big one. We use the letter mu for that. Uh, we've looked at also like population standard deviation. And this tells how spread out the values will be from the population mean. We use the letter sigma for that. Uh, mostly, we're going to be dealing, well, pretty much exclusively, we're going to be dealing with hypotheses about this parameter called the population. Yeah, so we're going to be there will be claims made about the population mean, and we will, we will test those claims. So a parameter is just a numerical measurement dealing with the population as opposed to a statistic. A statistic a statistic is a numerical measurement. that uh, that is for a sample for a sample so some examples of some statistics we've talked about we've talked about the sample mean sample mean sample average right that's called x bar We've talked about um, sample standard deviation. Which is like S. Some other ones we've talked about a Z score for a sample mean, right? A Z score for a sample mean. Well, this is uh, when you take a sample and you calculate the mean of the sample, you can convert that to a z-score, so that formula is what, x bar minus mu over sigma over root n. So what you're essentially doing, you're taking some sample information, a sample mean, and you're converting it to a z-score. So in this case, we call this z right here, this is called a test, a test statistic here. And uh, we had another one called a t-score, a t-score, and a t-score is used when you don't have the population standard deviation. You have a sample standard deviation, so let's say you have a sample mean, x bar, and you want to convert a sample mean over to a test statistic, you're going to use the t, right? So you take the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the sample standard deviation s over the square root of n. And this gives you another test statistic called the, the t test statistic. So we've seen the z's and the t's. Okay. So now we want to define what is a hypothesis. A hypothesis. Hypothesis. In statistics, what does it refer to? Well, this is not like in science where you're doing experiments, but in statistics, a hypothesis is 
Here's a claim. It's a claim about a parameter. Remember what a parameter is? A parameter is a numerical measurement for a population. So a hypothesis is a claim about, let's say, maybe population mean or population standard deviation. In our case, we're going to be doing everything is going to be about population mean for us. Population mean. We're going to be doing all our claims about population means in this course. So there's some other classes you can take where you do hypothesis testing for other things besides the population mean. You may do it for the population standard deviation or maybe correlation coefficient, maybe some other things. So that's what a hypothesis is. It's just a claim or a statement about a parameter, which in our case will be a population mean. Uh, what is a hypothesis test? hypothesis test uh, it's it is a standard statistical procedure statistical procedure for testing a claim about a parameter, a claim about a parameter. In other words, testing a hypothesis about a parameter. So when we're doing a hypothesis test, there's going to be essentially five steps to a hypothesis test. Five steps. To a hypothesis test. Number one. So you're going to have to do these in order. You're going to identify the null hypothesis. And alternative hypothesis. Step two, you're going to determine which distribution, in our case, we're going to be either using Z or T, Z or T will be used. Which tails will be used? Which tails will be used? And also determine the critical values. The critical values, the critical Z values or critical T values. Depending on how many tails you have. If you have just maybe a right tail or just a left tail, there may be just be one critical Z or one critical T value. If you have two tails, you have to find both critical uh, T values for the test. That's the second part of the testing procedure. Part three, you're going to calculate the test statistic value value, which is going to be a value for either Z or T. So this is going to come from uh, one of those formulas, right? You either have Z equals X bar minus mu over sigma over root N. You use this formula if you're using the Z, or you use the T equals X bar minus mu over S over root N if you're using the T. 
So you'll calculate the value of that based on your sample's information and all the other given information. Step four in this procedure, you're going to calculate, no, we've already said that, calculate the test statistic value. You're going to decide whether to reject, decide to reject the null hypothesis, the null hypothesis. Uh, so in shorthand, let me show you the, the symbol for null hypothesis. So null hypothesis is often written H sub zero. So decide whether to reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject, don't reject the null hypothesis, fail to reject the null hypothesis. So you're going to choose one of those options based on steps one, two, and three. You're going to either reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So that will occur after you've done steps one, two, and three. You'll make that decision. And then finally, in your last step, step five, you're going to write a conclusion summarizing your results. Write a conclusion summarizing the results of the test. Results of the hypothesis test. So what we would like to do is break these steps down one by one. Break these steps down one by one, show you how they work. So that's what we'll be doing in the upcoming videos.